The Outstanding Doctoral and Research Universities Professor of the Year is Teresa Balzer, Associate Professor, Department of Soil Science at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Introducing Professor Balzer is her former student, Jillian Donowski. Jillian, would you please come forward? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Professor Terry Balzer is an icon of guidance and leadership for students at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I'm honored to be here today to introduce her. During my time at the university, I became accustomed to the traditional large classroom with lectures presented via PowerPoint and only two exams that could, could determine your fate. Countless hours reading oversized textbooks were necessary to memorize that oft, one often unimportant fact that you knew a professor was going to ask, a question that could be the difference between an A and a B on the often dreaded bell curve. The focus too often moved away from seeing the big picture and gaining a deeper knowledge and appreciation for, for a subject to a high-tech, driven approach often not suitable for real learning. Professor Balzer immediately stood out from other teachers. Her enthusiasm and love of teaching were evident from the beginning. Class time was not just for lecture, it was a time for interaction and discussion, a time for us to ask questions, and a time for us to learn from each other. Professor Balzer has an amazing ability to connect with, her, with all of her students and focus on the big picture. The focus was never on rote memorization. Instead, students were encouraged to ask questions and challenge their brains so as to encourage a deeper appreciation for the subject and to build their own thinking skills. Professor Balzer has a knack for making even the most complicated of, of ideas tangible and understandable to everyone. Her use of concept maps, drawings, and graphs would make words on paper come alive. She understands that not everyone learns the same way, and she makes an effort to accommodate everyone. She makes herself accessible. She communicates with her students in online discussion forums and goes out of her way to find answers to any and every questions her students would ask. Um, so what makes a great teacher? First, a passion for one's subject and her students. Professor Balzer loves her, su her subject, but more importantly, she loves teaching her subject to her students. Next, a work ethic that doesn't quit. Teaching is a hard, demanding job that can require all that you can give. She is always present for her students. Finally, a willingness to reflect. Professor Balzer knows that her students are her best critics. She routinely, routinely asks her students why things went the way they did, whether good or bad. By asking her students how she can improve, Professor Balzer is able to quickly adapt her te teaching strategies to best meet the needs of her students. Professor Balzer has an excellent rapport with students of all levels and backgrounds. Her natural compassion is evident through her intense dedication to student learning and achievement. Her unwavering enthusiasm is apparent in her warm welcomes, and she instills confidence. That feeling is sometimes hard to come by at a large university, yet Professor Balzer brings, it out, brings out the best in all of her students. Professor Balzer is more than just a professor. She is a mentor, an inspiration, and a friend. These intrinsic qualities are the basis of my unconditional support for Professor Balzer in receiving this award. I cannot think of anyone who deserves it more. Congratulations, Professor. Wow, thank you, Jill, and uh, thank you, Mr. Lippincott, and thank you, everybody, for being here. This is very strange. I'm not used to a podium being behind it. It's really a humbling experience to be accepting this award. I don't think there's been anything in my experience to date that prepares me for something like this, especially to be recognized for something that I so absolutely love to do. Um, and people sometimes ask me to talk about my teaching. They want to know, uh, what's the secret? They ask. How do you do it? What techniques do you use? Do you use quizzes, online discussions, uh, groups, clickers? How do you do it? And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and to be honest, I usually don't know what to say. I, I do use all of those things, but really for me, there's no secret formula. There's no easy answer. I just do what I do. Uh, who's seen the movie City Slickers? And remember that one? Yeah. Uh, Billy Crystal out on the cattle trail trying to find himself midlife crisis. Jack Palance, scary trail boss. 
Billy asks him about the secret of life, and Jack Palance says, you know what the secret of life is? It's this. One thing, just one thing. You stick to that, and the rest don't mean squat. And Billy says, well, that's great, yeah, but what's the one thing? And he says, that's what you got to figure out for yourself. <laughs> and uh, I thought about it. When it comes to being a teacher and a person, really, uh, what's my one thing? And so after thinking about it and having to write down some things, knowing I was going to talk with everybody today, uh, I, th I came up with uh, this. It's not about me, but yet it's all about me. And uh, I know you're probably thinking, what? <laughs> And, uh, and so let me try to explain. It's not about me. I hope this is the obvious one, right? It's not about me. It's about them. It's about the students. Why else would we be teaching? And uh, it means putting learning first, really putting learning first. It's not about me. It's about them. And I don't just mean the way that we often hear about this. I mean, who's heard of learner-centered classrooms? And there's some great books out there about learner-centering. Um, but I mean, really doing whatever it takes to make learning happen in the classroom setting my ego aside, not being worried about being right or looking good. Um, sometimes that even means having fun in the classroom, playing games, um, singing songs, having the students write songs, having them develop games. It means doing whatever it takes to have learning happen, um, being willing to look like a fool, being willing to be wrong, being willing to risk whatever I need to. Uh, my job is to set the stage and then get out of the way. It's not my stage, it's theirs. It's not about me, but at the same time, it's also all about me. And by this, I mean that whether I realize it or not, my students are always learning from me. What I say and how I act and the things that I do make a difference. And what that means to me is that I have a responsibility to be intentional about what and how I teach. And I often teach my teachers, future faculty, that we're always a billboard and it's up to us to decide what we want to be advertising. And uh, the thing that I most, most truly want to advertise for my students and for anyone that I have the opportunity to encounter is to care, to truly, deeply care, to be willing to be passionate about life and get messy and risk going too far, and all of these things. Um, of course, I want them to care about the topic, it's dirt, what's not to love? <laughs> Come on. But more than that, I want them to care about each other. And, uh, and this wasn't always clear to me. This wasn't how I used to be. I was trained as a good basic scientist at an excellent University of California, Berkeley. Um, I knew that I needed to be objective and rational and dispassionate and, uh, and, and treat my subject as an other, a thing to be studied. Um, but early on, what I realized in my career at Madison was that far, far, far more important than any scholarly enthusiasm that I have for my topic is my willingness to care about people and uh, to truly and deeply and honestly care about them and believe in their abilities even if they don't. And years ago, I was told a story about Michelangelo and his famous statue, David. Anyone know that story? Anyone going to tell me you know, ahead of time? Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, so the block of stone for David wasn't perfect, it was flawed. And people asked Michelangelo, how did you create something as amazing and beautiful as David from a flawed block of stone? And he replied, I saw the angel in the marble and I carved until I set him free. And uh, Michelangelo believed that every block of stone has a statue inside it, and it's the task of the sculptor to discover it. And likewise, I learned that when I look for David in my students, when I seek the masterpiece that each one has inside them, something magic can happen. And I see the students stand a little straighter, and I see them begin to believe in themselves the same way that I do. Students who are excellent and students who have been told time and time again that they're not quick enough, they're not smart enough, they're not bright enough. They have David in them too. So it's one of my greatest privileges to watch this happen, to watch this blossoming and this unfolding, the power of caring. So it's not about me, my ego, but it is all about me, my willingness to care and recognition of the influence that I have, whether I intend it or not. And that leads me to one last thing about caring and our responsibility as professors. It not only matters, but it's absolutely imperative that we care. 
so that all of those that we encounter, all of the Tyler Clementis who think that they're alone, realize that they're not, that there is someone out there who cares and believes in them, so that all of those who think that bullying is the only way to be important realize that it's not, that they're worth more than that. And so I'm not kidding when I say that the world depends on our caring. And therefore, it's all about me, even though it's not about me. <laughs> and actually, particularly, especially because it's not about me. So to close, I wish to say a few thank yous, of course. Um, first, thank you to the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching and the Council for the Advancement and Support of Education. Um, and uh, for sponsoring the award, and, and thank you to the University of Wisconsin, uh, to Robert Ray, who nominated me, and our uh, Chancellor, Biddy Martin, and Provost Paul DeLuca, and especially to Mr. Aaron Bauer, our Vice Provost for Teaching and Learning, for making the time to be here today. And uh, most importantly, most importantly, thank you to all of those that I've been privileged to interact with and learn from my entire life. Uh, I'm for, forever grateful for all of the teachers, whether they realized it or not, that have helped me become the person that I am to all those who believed in me and saw David in me, even when I couldn't see it myself. And so I say thank you to my parents and my students and my friends and my colleagues and those who may never know the ways in which they've touched me. I'm grateful to you all. And this award is not mine, it's ours. Thank you. Congratulations, Terry, on being named the 2010 Outstanding Doctoral Professor of the Year. Congratulations.